Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. But the fun doesn't stop there, no sorry. Every few episodes, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will ask you, the listener, to vote on which movie they will play as an RPG, recorded in video and in glorious black and white, and brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! Well, hi everyone. Welcome to the show. My name's Matthew. And I am Dusty. And this is Nathaniel. And this week, we are doing Valerian. Valerian, (laughs) the biggest touted show ever. We've been talking about this since episode one. Yeah, we have. And I really, I, I have to take a moment... And apologize to both of you because I was like, if there's going to be any movie that's going to top Fifth Element, it's going to be this one. And I, I was I bought wrong. into the myth. You, you had every it. right to say that. Everything about this movie on paper was right. And trailer was yeah, right. And too. trailer was right. <laughs> and the source material is so rich and wonderful that it really got my hopes up. So if you can't see where we're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be... I mean, I liked the movie for what it was. I I did enjoy it. There were there were moments where I was, oh God, come on, just get to the point. And <laughs> the exposition took forever. And then when it got to like, this is the this is the plot. This is the reason why you paid fourteen dollars and fifty cents to watch this goddamn movie before snacks. Before snacks, I was like, really? That's that's it. In flops like this or why I prefer to see movies at the second run beer theaters. Yeah. Because for the price of one movie ticket and a first run, I can get a movie ticket and a beer and a slice slice of pizza. pizza. So and it's in Portland, it's good pizza. Can I can I take it as a fact that neither of you thought this movie was the amazing tour de force? I okay. Well Well, hang on, hang on, Nathaniel. Hang on, hang on, hang on. (laughs) So it was not an amazing tour de force. I went into this movie. Actually, no, I came out of this movie how I did going into uh, Ghost in the Shell. I which one? The first one? Or no, the, the Scarlett Johansson one. Oh, oh uh, hang on, what? hang on, oh. because I I'd watched the anime movie and I was familiar with the the whole mythos, but I subtracted that from that movie and just went in to watch it as a sci-fi action movie with a kick-ass female lead. So I was kind of hoping for this. I knew there's a lot of source material, and I know a lot of people are very, very uh, dedicated to the source material. I didn't know any of the source material. You're, and you're specifically referring to Valerian? Yes, or to Valerian to now. To Valerian okay. now. Uh, I'm sorry. I want to try a new thing. Yeah, I swear a lot, so I would like to attempt to describe this movie without swearing just by using... <laughs> this is going to be every, a really long episode. E- e- everyday <laughs> normal words. And I have to say, this movie had the potential to be so good. But it did. What it ended up being, and here's where I'm going to sub in something mm-hmm. that's not swearing, is a fermented menstrual chunk. <laughs> it was awful, and it because it could have been so much. Oh, it had the potential. I think this is a fantastic exception to the meme. Twilight was a better love story than Valerian. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Do you remember when Luke Besson made good things? Yeah. Like, we've, like, what no, happened? We've, we've done. Yeah, it this was is last his second month because we, that was my first exposure. We, and I had high fucking hopes. We've, oh, we've, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you already lost. You lost. You, you lost the game. Take a shot. Is that a thing? I guess I so. sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we've already done. Can't I just put a quarter we, in a we, jar or something? No, <laughs> we've I could done, die like this, man. <laughs> we've, we've, we've already done Fifth Element, with which was Luke Besson. <laughs> we did District B thirteen, which was another written by. Yeah, in fairness, uh, it was a Luc Besson movie. <laughs> yeah, and we've 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 now done Valerian, and we have on the list like Lucy and maybe oh even. Oh God, you want me to watch that movie again? I love that movie. Uh, <laughs> I think, and we also have Leon the Professional somewhere. So I don't want I don't want our listeners to think that we have like a man crush on Luc Besson. What's this? We Dusty. I don't, I don't want anyone to think that I have a man crush on <laughs> Luke Besson when I don't, but I do like the movies. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Was... The, the, the parts that he was directly involved in, like he directed this one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so set everything. design was. Yeah. He did the screenplay. He did the direction, the casting. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. How old is this man? Is he going senile? I think he's in his 70s by now. He's going okay. senile. We've had his best work, ladies and gentlemen, because. 
I loved everything about what happened in the background. Mm -hmm. I loved the funny hat, and I liked the nice hat call out. (laughs) Oh, that's that's one of my notes too. Mm -hmm. That that was a very Um, nice reference. Nice. I loved how everyone dressed. I loved the entire mechanic of dimensional shifting combat and the tactics therein. Oh, that was great. That was inventive. It was lovely. The outfits, the the uniforms of the military, Mm -hmm. their weird helmets that they were wearing in Mm -hmm. that initial scene. All of that reminded me of the same kind of stuff in Fifth Element. Yeah, yes. and and I had I had such high hopes, and then it dropped into this planet of lotus eaters who got overtaken by space battle. Hey, wh- I I got a thing for bald girls. It's it's just a weird thing. I thought that that guy was pretty hot, and then I was, suddenly I was like, oh, and now she's dead. Why did you do that? I have I a wanted thing to see for more people who make things. Oh God, yeah, and I <laughs> love that whole that synergy that they had with the planet. I think you're, really I think cool. you're taking my meaning the wrong way. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I, I think I am. <laughs> my uh, my sympathies led with the humans in the space battle. Sorry, you wiped out a commune of hippies. Well, you were fighting for your life. These uh, things we'll, happen. We'll get we'll get to that one. So if you haven't seen, <laughs> wow, and you say Cosmo was the hero. <laughs> this is coming from Matthew. Thank you. I Matthew. never claimed to be a good person. I claimed this to be true. charming. This is very I true. When you actually make the I, statement that you're not a good person, I know <laughs> these things. Why is everyone always surprised? So, so well, let's talk about those characters. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get to that. So okay. if you haven't seen Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, it came out in August of 2017. And there will be spoilers. Yes. Just so you know. And it is it is a... Don't lie to the people. After the huge <laughs> internet outcry, no one is going to see The this. general synopsis of Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets is set in the 28th century. The former International Space Station has now become Alpha, a city where millions of creatures from different planets live peacefully, and exchange their knowledge and cultures and values. Best now the, part of the show. Best yeah, part of the that movie. Was, yeah, yeah, that was. Now, now, the humans form a special police division to preserve peace through the universe. Peacekeepers, high Farscape, including officers Valerian. But they weren't British. Uh, shut up. Can we do Farscape? I would love to. I will do an entire series on Farscape with you. But officers Valerian, a happy-go-lucky major, and his partner Laureline, a no-nonsense sergeant. Who continuously talks back to her direct superior. Exactly. Special operatives Valerian and Laura You don't Lee marry are, that. You do not date. <laughs> you do not fraternize. Must race to identify the marauding menace <laughs> and safeguard not just Alpha, but the future of the universe as a whole. You know, that sounds like it could be a really great story. It, it really, yeah, on it, paper, it is. It does. I and think Michael Bay could make that a better story. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I I don't know, man. Transformers three. I think it would make more sense. The that's that's that my answer. Watched. That's my answer to a lot of things. Transformers three. Come on now. Come on Wh- now. Which was, I think, a bigger box office bomb than this one. Yeah, <sighs> we'll get to that also. So the cast. We start with Dane DeHaan, who plays Major Valerian. Now he's Are, that par- wasn't Keanu Reeves. No, that was not. Are Keanu. you sure? No. So because it Keanu Reeves exactly can act. <laughs> like, like I know Keanu Reeves. So, it, Valerian in, in the in the City of a Thousand Planets is what I like to call the early adventures of Corbin Dallas. I, I you would talk to me outside the show about this. Yes. I, I can see your point, but man, after watching that movie, Corbin, no, no. Well, he does grow up, but I think so, even eight year old Corbin had more sense, probably, personality <laughs> so than than this guy. Dane DeHaan or Major Valerian has uh-huh. also been seen in uh, Cure for Wellness, which was a, a horror movie that came out. It was also uh, this movie. Cure for Wellness. <laughs> the Amazing Spider-Man 2, which uh, he shares the role with James Franco. They've both played both Harry Osborn in the Spider-Man series. and The tragic, Goblin? Yes. And tragic film star James Dean. And he was also in True Blood for a few episodes. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, he, he played James Dean? Yes. Or James Dean also played the Green Goblin? No, James Dean oh. died way before the Green Goblin. <laughs> Keanu's getting all the roles. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 cu- I couldn't distinguish it. The no, voice I know, yeah. was the same. But, Keanu yeah, but it was has, the same as like Bill and Ted era Keanu. Yeah, Keanu like, Reeves yeah. has a little more animation yeah. now. Yeah. And no. no, I like Keanu Reeves. He's a good actor. I, I like th- everything Keanu Reeves does off the dude, screen. But I, dude, I will say John I haven't seen John Wick, oh, which oh. I hear is amazing. Well, we'll we'll talk about that at some point yeah. before the end of this year. Okay. So we also have, and I, I'm probably going to butcher a lot of names. Hold on, this, so this guy sometimes this. that matters, sometimes it doesn't. So matter. Valerian, right? Yes. Chaotic neutral. Oh yes. Chaotic neutral. Yeah. Oh yeah. He keeps totally. talking about how he's a soldier and he plays by the rules. He doesn't. He says this line: "I'm a soldier. I play by the rules." As Many a rebuttal times. to Laura yeah. Lean to do a thing. 
right after he punches his I know. superior I know. officer I know. in the face. I know. He's, but he says it. He's a faced. chud. He's a chud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is. He he is. He's a douche, bro. He yeah. really is. Yeah. I expected him to have like the blonded tips or the pop like, collar. And the yeah. pop can you collar, make a pop collar space? And like the checkered shirt and <laughs> sandals with socks. Oh, he also has no respect for authority at all. And uh, he really has no respect for women. And I mean, the, remember that the scene where, where he's chasing conquests. he's chasing that spate the dogfight scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I gotta catch him! It's the ship with the general. Okay, I'm gonna shoot it. Wait, what the what the what? <laughs> Why? No, it was chaotic. Grap- neutral. It was a grappling gun. Chaotic. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, this oh, is he was firing that. bullets at it, just over space <laughs> bullets. Space bullets. Space bullets. Space, space bullets would probably do nothing but turn you pink and give you indigestion. That'll chaotic mess up neutral. Your we all agree? Oh, yeah, agree. Chaotic yeah. neutral. That's the first time I think that we've completely agreed on chaotic neutral yes. for a character. Uh, then we have Kara Delavinging. Vel- I can't. Delavigny? Delavinia? So, yes, yes, something like that. I, I'm probably, I should probably have a pronouncement guide for some names. For I think the first, that's going to be going your thing. For the yeah. first scene. And right up until the, he pulled her out, uh, she pulled him out of the alternate dimensional. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which God, caper. that was a great like. Was great. I was like, device. oh, uh, well, at least it's one good actor to balance his bullshit. And then she went on to, I'm making air quotes, act throughout the rest of the movie, and I was like, nope, that didn't save it. Okay, she's bad too. It's odd yeah. that you should mention that because somebody asked her in an interview if she actually likes to act. And she's like, no, I really don't like it. This well, is not the good what I news want to is do. It doesn't show. Well, she's well, a model, right? Yeah, she is a model. She is a fashion model. Uh, but before that, she played in Suicide Squad as yep. the Enchantress. Mm-hmm. And then also in Anna Karina. Also one I always fuck up on pronouncing. Karina? But she is a fashion model and the face of Burberry's beauty campaign. She's the also fuck been. is a Burberry? Burberry is a. Uh, a berry, a, a designer sort of line. Fruit. It's a designer oh. line of clothing. I thought it was a town somewhere. Burberry? In the UK. <laughs> <laughs> She's been featured Coming in advertising campaigns yeah. for other brands, including H and M, Zara, and Chanel. She's also appeared on the catwalk for brands such as uh, Machino, Jason Wu, and Oscar De La Renta, Burberry, Dolce and Gabbana, Fendi, and Stella McCartney. Uh, Chaotic she, good. Yeah, she also uh, has been on covers of multiple magazines. Chaotic good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, she always did a good thing. Yeah. Then we have Clive Owen, who was Commander Aaron Fillett. As who, soon as you see him... You know he's the bad guy. You're just like, okay, he's got that look of... He just looks like an asshole. Yeah. Yep, he's the bad guy. Yeah, you just um, know it. He's kind of like uh, Peter Weller in everything he did after RoboCop. <laughs> you know he's the bad guy. Yeah, yeah. Star right. Trek, uh, the Sin Eater, which was then turned to the... Uh, he didn't do a good job either. No. Uh, Clive Owen was uh, some of the few notable movies Inside no. Man, Children of Men. That is on the fucking list. Yes. That is. Uh, shoot him up. Ooh, I'm getting teary just thinking about that movie. <laughs> Did you ever read the book? Children of Men? Yeah. No. The oh. movie affected me so much that you I You should read really the book. Take, a, take the time to read the book. Yeah. Uh, and then we, he was also in Sin City, to name just yeah. a few. That was a great movie. Uh, so he could act. He just chose not to. Or I, I, I think, think he I, did the best with what he was given. I would agree with that, you on that. The yeah. only time I, I saw good acting at him was at the end where he was talking about duty. You know, it's really funny you say that because I was thinking the same thing on the car ride over here mm-hmm. because Dusty stopped to pick me up and we were a little bit late because my partner was showing me a few good men. Mm-hmm. But very specifically, the scene in like the courtroom in the or... with Jack Nicholson. Oh, I've you're never, talking about a movie. Yeah. The movie. I've never seen that movie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I just, I just that went this, over this, like, and then he came back. back. <laughs> yeah. Hot cops. It was all hot cops. <laughs> we were watching A Few Good Men and I'd never seen it before, but I'd always heard that quote from Jack Nicholson. You can't, you handle, can't the handle the truth. And that interview or that interrogation of jack nicholson playing that character mm-hmm. in the court as on the right over here i kept thinking yeah actually i could kind of mentally compare clive owen's performance at the end of this movie to that not as good but i think he was trying it was the to, discount he was trying to in. chew the yeah. scenery as best as he could he was trying to earn yeah. his paycheck he yeah. o- no he only had one scene that mattered and he put his effort there i'll give him that mm, okay but, uh, you know, I had a lot of sympathy with that choice. I mean, and this is a movie full of scenes that didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Then we move on to probably my favorite oh, character. Oh, sorry. Lawful oh. Evil? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lawful yeah. Evil? Oh, very much so. Lawful Neutral. <laughs> nah. Okay. Yeah. He, he committed no, no, no. genocide. You guys keep doing protagonist. 
shit. And seeing that the protagonist is automatically evil, and that just it, it Antag- makes antagonist. antagonist, antagonist, whatever. It, it makes he it... he made decisions to to wipe out something there. He knew it was on that planet. Yeah, yeah. So he made the decision to do it just to destroy an enemy. Casualties that had nothing to do. That's like yeah, murdering how, how that neutral, children. Though? Yeah, that's like but, I mean, collater- collateral damage, as they called it. Hey, they said it worked. Murder. I mean, the human fleet was saved. Yes. And how many people were on that planet? Did anyone catch that number? Not a lot. I don't remember was, the number. It was I about was it was about thirty million. Glossing my eyes over. Yeah, thirty million to save a few hundred thousand. Yeah. So you would sacrifice thirty million. There's, people I mean, there's to save a few thirty thousand. million hippies living on this coastal planet. <laughs> who who gives a shit? Wow, you you and Cosmo and Captain Douchebag you just like <laughs> hang out. <laughs> I'm just saying, if anyone needs an evil henchman, I. <laughs> I think you have it tattooed on your arm, don't you? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> then we go to probably my favorite character out uh, of the but entire no, seriously, movie. Lawful, lawful neutral. Uh, I'm, lawful I'm, evil. I'm, I'm making that case by saying he was looking at the greater good for the most, which was the city whose population, if you note, far outweighed the population of that planet. Well, okay. First off, I will actually agree with you on the level of the yeah, greater good. Yeah, I see good. I see both of this. I agree with here. you on the level of the greater good because then he talks about the damage that could have, it could have done mm-hmm. to the entire reputation of humanity. And he believed that, too. He just that wasn't said, being a schmuck. Evil people tend to not believe that they're evil. And I think that he was definitely doing some things that were outside of the law. I think people who are when too he good murdered, see oh, when you murder black and white. He murdered a potential whistleblower. Yeah. That was a direct murder. That, for me, crosses the line into evil. Regardless of what decisions that he may have made in the battlefield, when he murdered a dude in cold blood who was one of his officers, that crossed the line. I'm just saying greater good. And he didn't, unlike Cosmo, he didn't just have his friends attack. Mm -hmm. He pulled the gun. It showed him. Well, again, this is some weird flashback. I wasn't quite sure what was happening in that moment, whether or not we were well, we can seeing write that off too. images of somebody's Humility. version of what happened. Or whether no, that, we was his, sitting... that was his flashbacks. Oh, so those were yeah. his flashbacks? Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, he he pulled the trigger on the dude. Mm-hmm. Back to the head. That's that's cold, man. That's cold. Well, that's cold. That doesn't necessarily... What what do you say lawful neutral is, then? You, you, you guys lawful neutral is kind of that balance. Going... I've played many lawful neutral so, characters. So the I, just de- I just default to neutral on yeah. most everything. <laughs> so I would say that a lawful neutral character would do such a thing. Because he is, he is serving to keep the balance. The balance of an incredibly precious city. The like of which has never been seen in the universe. With untold millions living on it in relative peace. At the... Expense. Hope that this doesn't become what happened uh, with uh, with an hour long argument at Seekers. That's I what will, editing's for. Will be I fun. will acknowledge this, Dusty. <laughs> so, for those of you who have not listened to any of the other podcasts <laughs> and have not listened to the Sneakers podcast, there was a long standing argument on alignments uh, with the character of Cosmo. So, anytime there's a comment about Cosmo, that's you should go back and check out the, the Sneakers podcast. It's, it's a it's a really good episode. <laughs> so, after Clive Owen, we have Ethan, probably my favorite character out of the entire movie, Ethan Hawke. I'm playing, sorry, Dusty. What's wh- your take? I already said my take, which is lawful evil. You said lawful evil. Sitting yeah. with a bunch of freaking <laughs> paladins here. <laughs> no, far from it. Uh, my favorite character out of the entire movie, Jolly the Pimp, played by Ethan Hawke. Yeah, that was a that was good acting. He was he was I mean it was a short. He only came in for like two days to do his bits, but it was a good well, character. It's amazing what a good actor can do in two days. End it. <laughs> he was he's also been seen in the movies Gattaca, uh, yeah. the remake recent remake of the Magnificent Seven, which is I believe on our list. Training Day, The Newton Boys, and Reality Bites. And I believe, no, never mind. I was thinking of Josh Hartnett. I always get the two of them confused. How do you do that? They look nothing alike. They sound nothing alike. They I act nothing alike. Mentally get them confused. Yeah, it's not like Valerian yeah. and Keanu. I mean, yeah. there's just there's, there's differences. <laughs> uh, alignment for Jolly the Pimp. I don't really see enough of his character to get a hint of his motivations. Other than yeah, I, I, that, yeah. That, that's hard to, to say. I will say... Uh, uh, I'm just gonna go neutral. Neutral is the best I can okay. do. Yeah, yeah he, he does what he has to to survive. You know, he's okay. pimpy and violent and probably drugged, but whatever. And then we have the character of Bubble, played by music quote 
superstar, end quote, Rihanna. I'm just going to say she did not shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> I was going to say that that character made no sense and okay. had no reason to be there. I liked, okay, I don't know any of the source material when you said in the car that there's no character that you remember. And of Her death could have happened off scene. It off screen. It was, it was so meaningless. Yeah. And meaningless. the yeah. effect that yeah. it had on him, I come on. Okay, as a yeah. writer, this is this is a throwaway character, and that's what throwaway. this character was in. in but the... she didn't even get an on screen. No, well, but ha- hang you didn't on, see hang the on, wound. Let me, that let, me, killed yeah. her. let me suddenly. Let me, oh, I'm dying. No, no, Wait, she what? got she got the wound from going through the the, the trash. But she said she got it in battle. Well, she maybe so, she lied. Okay, that's a that was terrible. Okay, so as a writer, I would have used this character. So the moment that uh, Valerian got the information, that character would have been left in the brothel, like. Just leave yeah, the character left in the brothel to appear later and save the day with something. Yeah, maybe probably. Or when, when we or bring the whole cast back together at the end. Yeah, or maybe appearance. or maybe she's about to die and they're in the same area yeah. and he saves her one last like you know I you did me a solid I do you a solid and have your have a good life. But she was a the complete throwaway. The dancing character. was fantastic. Oh, the dancing was great. Yeah, but that it was felt it. like I was oh, watching the Mulan Ruse music video. It was cool. Yeah, it was, I liked the transition, good. the computer yeah. graphics. Did anyone notice the the last dress that she had, which I took as an homage to the diva in Fifth Element because yeah. it had the slit open where the diva got shot and had to have the the, the stones in Fifth Element pulled out of. I did not notice that. Yep. Also, the small, heavily armored aliens at the in the beginning were also they looked out. like yeah. Amanda Shee ones. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they they looked, I was they were more mobile. I was really hoping they the Mandashi. I wanted to see Mandashi ones and Mangalore. Just even yeah, somewhere yeah. in the background, even and yeah. and I'll get to the background in, about of this movie in a little bit. And then uh, I, and I have no idea what her alignment is. Chaotic neutral, maybe neutral. She's had to do whatever she can. Neutral, yeah, good. Say chaotic, chaotic good. Chaotic yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's cares. trying. She's to, an she's, NPC. Yeah. Uh, she's also been in the movies Annie. This is the end. Battleship. And the all female reboot of Oceans Eleven, which will be Oceans Eight, which is just finishing in of production. Oh, I'm sure those will all be fantastic, just like Battleship. <laughs> and then we have I'm bitter. I shouldn't be this bitter. It was You're bringing me down. It, man. it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> You just did not like this movie. I didn't because it had the potential to be so Oh, good. I know. I know. And then I just I had to watch them fail and fail and fail. And I just, I at, at every point I was going, no, don't, uh, uh, no. Oh, you're, uh, gonna, you're gonna love it when I get to like the production costs. No, and you're oh cringe. god! All right, so uh, I'm sorry. We then have the great. I mean, this this gentleman. It was like the sh- as small bit part as it was. It was he is the crowning jewel in the entire going. movie, yep. and that is Mr. Rutger Hauer. Nope, that's not who that's, I thought you were going. Really? With. Yep. Oh. Who did you think of? John Goodman. Right? Oh, yeah. That's the only character Goodman. I completely I really forgot good. that yep. he was in the movie. Yep. Because he's an alien. He's completely CG'd. It's his voice. No, I'm... Was he? Yeah. Are you sure that wasn't John <laughs> <laughs> But no. Um, it was good. So, Rutger Hauer, uh, he played the president of the World State Federation, who's also been in Batman Begins, Sin City, Blind Fury, which I like. Lady it's Hawk. Lady Hawk. And Blade Runner. <laughs> all right oh siri thanks so siri just said hey siri tell me if you are that was it only a minor stark and all cassius make a charleston <laughs> interesting about john goodman what I, that's what it sounds siri like siri up. opened up a text message and just hit <laughs> enter a few I, yeah dozen have, you, times? have you been going to weird porn sites because no just, i don't i don't go to have porn a on my i gotta take this call hold on I think my sister's in labor. Oh, hey, congratulations to sister. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, so even where did of we get... the B-sides. Okay, where did we get interrupted? You know, one of those edits is going to be, oh, God, my sister's calling you. Didn't answer this. No, that's <laughs> fine. No, you should keep that in. Uh, actually, we ended, uh, we, were t- we were talking about Rucker Hauer, and then we were talking about John Goodman. No, 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 we were talking about after the cut. I don't know that yeah. we seeked back into John Goodman. It is impossible to watch any aspect of this movie. Uh, including the trailer, uh, and not compare it to the fifth element. I mean, it is, it is the fifth element and basically. That's so sad because uh, one is clearly the superior. Oh yeah, no, I one mean, one shall I, stand and one, one shall fall. fall. Both are based on the same series of uh, French science fiction comics, or thereabouts. Are they Valerian and Laureline? Kind of, sort of. Yes, the they're, same in the, they're in the is same it common universe? universe. Yeah, 
They're in, oh. Well, they're, they're not really set in the same universe. <laughs> okay, so from Luc Besson, they're set in the same universe. Okay, well, Luc but... Besson doesn't know what he's fucking talking about. <laughs> for someone that's such a huge fan of yeah. that series, he didn't do it justice from what I know the creators were involved in Fifth Element. Yeah, they also took him to court, apparently, at some and point. And so did yeah. uh, Yudorowsky and Moebius, I mm-hmm. think, for yeah, Moebius. The Inkle, yep. which was another one which is heavily inspired mm-hmm. by the, at that same time. Mm-hmm. So both you can easily see that from the color palette interspersed with lurid splashes of neon orange, uh, the ass-kicking female protagonists, they both lend to each other. Both films are an ode to Luc Besson's love of the 60s space opera. And it's very, it's very apparent, and you, know, you see it. Yeah. Uh, and this movie, Valerian, is what Luc Besson wanted to make the fifth element of. This I'm is, so glad he didn't the first time around. So am I. So am I. But he couldn't because, as we said on that podcast, there yeah. were technological constraints at the time. So that may have been what saved it. <laughs> yeah, Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets, uh, as we've noted, uh, both in that podcast and this one already, is based on the comic series Valerian and Laureline, written by. And I'm going to butcher this, and Nathaniel, you can you can kind of save me on this since you're more familiar with the source material, Pierre. Kristen, who's the writer, and Jade Claude Mezere, uh, who is a French comic strip artist and illustrator. Uh, Jean Claude was an art director on Fifth Element, also. Fun story. Mm-hmm. That name, Laureline, mm-hmm. was invented by those creators. Oh, wow. Okay. The name had never existed before. They invented it for their comic book. No. The first record. Not unless it came out before the 60s. The first record. Heinlein. It did. The Heinlein f- has a character named Lorelei. The first. Ooh, th- I think you're Lorelei, right. Lorelei, the first ever recorded character, or sorry, the first ever recorded human being with that name was in 1968, one year after the comics came out. I think that's wrong. There's an uneasy no, silence. They invented the name. They huh. invented it to match certain elements. Well, you I know. can say squiggly boof, but that doesn't mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so pretty sure. Principal photography Sorry, on... 1969, the... one year after. Principal photography on the film began on January 5th, 2016, and was laid over seven sound stages dedicated to the film at the Cité de Cinéma in Saint-Denis, north of Paris. That's where mostly everything was filmed. In total, there are twenty-seven over 2,700 visual computer graphic effects. Should have gone with Pup, Puppins and spent the money on actors. Now, what, what was interesting... And dialogue, and dialogue coaches, yeah. and editing. And a fucking different and better movie. And drag the writer out <laughs> into the street. <laughs> now, Shoot him down in the mud like the dog he is. Oh, my God. You are just salty tonight. I am. I'm, I'm a little salty. One of the interesting things that, that the actress, the lead actress, had made comment was that for the six months of filming, that sh- her parts were, she filmed everything in front of a green screen. There were only two weeks of filming, which was probably only worth about three days worth of filming, that was actual physical in front of people and set filming. Everything else was green screen. So this movie well, was it's pretty good much. To know that she was a good enough actress that it didn't affect her performance. What you're saying about the green screen mm-hmm. uh, sounds a lot like everything that I've heard about the prequel trilogy for Star Wars. Oh, yeah. How yeah. the actors were like, you know, it would be nice if we could actually be on some sets. Mm-hmm. Well, the same with the three Hobbit movies. Yeah. I, I, I really hope it, it all It all comes back to the actor, stop. though. It, mm-hmm. I, an actor. Uh, you've seen the, the, the Smog video with... Uh, Smog. Whoever. With Benedict. Cumberbutt. <laughs> with him. Yeah. He can act. Oh, he's a great actor. The man actor. is an actor. And he acted in front of a green screen just by rolling around on the floor like a crazy person. <laughs> so, and he did amazing. Yes. Uh, the budget for this movie, we're uh, going to get into some, num- some numbers here, and you're, you're going to cringe a lot. I'm going to hear you scream quietly, probably. The budget was a little more than $177 million. So, How much of that was Clive Owen? <laughs> as of August 21st, 2017... The U.S. take <laughs> was just shy of $40 million. <laughs> As of August 21st, the worldwide market, not the United States, was only $132 million. So, so it hasn't even money. broken. It hasn't even broken. I can't think of the word. Broken even. Broken even. even. Thank you. Uh, the production budget being $177 million, the film will need to gross Almost four hundred million worldwide in, in order to break even and justify a sequel. <sighs> That's not going to happen. No. 
Other, you know, I can't even see this becoming a cult classic. No, this is just bad. Well, the, people said the same thing about the Fifth Element. They, there were people that came out going, "This is a horrible, horrible but movie." That was good. No, but no, but, but this is, but it's just okay. I understand we have a love for Fifth Element, but it, the same. I'm not saying that this movie will go that direction, but people said the exact same thing about Fifth Element. People are dumb. People this said the bad. exact same thing about Cole. Or Kroll, excuse me. Kroll? Yeah, I, Kroll I, I, was thinking, too. I was thinking Cole the Conqueror for a moment, but that was bad. So other movies that came out in that this movie was fighting up against. Now, I know a lot of movies get released every month. In August alone, and I know this is trying to kick into the summer blockbuster, but there really weren't a lot of blockbusters in, in this year's uh, movie spree. But there were 64 movies released in the month of August. Jesus. Was Dunkirk two, in August? Yeah. Is that another That's one? two okay. movies a day. Basic math. I'm a little wrong here. Two movies a day, give or take. That's a lot of movies. You know, this is this is really hard for me. I, I don't I want to care that somebody and many somebody's probably lost their ass on this. But if you're investing heavily in a movie, mm-hmm. I'll read the script. Too. I'll get to that too. Uh, I'm so actually f- having a hard time being enthusiastic about even talking about it. Oh, a no, few, no. I, I got some yeah. hate to spew, and a I'm enthusiastic about that. No, you, I could. You guys I could. are salty. Good I'm God. Try- <laughs> Dusty, we, we were talking on the way here. Yeah, I, no, I'm trying to hold I, back. I, I, because no, I figured please. That I will because let, you have a lawful good persona. I, on the I other do. hand, am apparently lawful fucking evil. So I'm just going to go I for really it. don't know what my 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 personal alignment is. So why, don't you, uh, why don't you finish up the shit so I can start yelling? My compass spins. Uh, it was going up against the Dark Tower, which is another one we're going to be doing soon. Detroit, uh, the Hitman's Bodyguard, which looks that like, looks good. looks looks I hilarious. Heard nothing but good about that yeah. movie. And the one I really want to see, Logan Lucky. That's one that that looks hilarious. I've never. So even Wolverine heard of walks into a casino. N- no, that's oh, all no. I'm thinking. It's got of, yeah. Daniel Craig, and then it's got uh, the guy that played uh, Kylo Ren. Oh no, Star Logan Wars. Lucky is the sequel to Logan's Run, where he oh, starts a casino <laughs> on the surface. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. I'm I'm gonna shiv someone. <laughs> Say, man, we we don't really follow movies, right? Yeah, this yeah. is your gig, man. This yeah, I gig. know. Thank you, thank you yeah. for. I think I recognize yeah. one of those movies. Yeah, the one with Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Besson, I wonder why that is. <laughs> Luke Besson independently crowdsourced and personally funded Valerian. Oh no! His this was crowdsourced. Did yes. And did he pre- kickstart this shit? Pretty much. A production oh, budget no. between 177 and 180 million was what was what was figured. All oh, those poor fans. It is the most expensive European and independent film ever made. Now it's not. Wasn't it's, crowdsourced. Like a Kickstarter or Indiegogo or something, he went to multiple investors. They saw the script, they read it, and they said, "We'll go ahead and, and you know front a percentage of this." Oh, okay. Back. So they went to investors. So yes, that's the most expensive foreign movie. Yeah, that is French and, movie. And, and you say they saw the script? Yes, wasn't, they did. Huh. Wasn't that an acclaim at the Fifth Element at the same time? The most expensive mm-hmm. French movie. Yeah. Yeah. He just keeps raising just that keeps, bar, yep. but he doesn't raise the quality. He just didn't mm-hmm. manage to get the movie under that yeah. bar. Mm, yeah. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's like a crocodile wobbling around on two legs trying to do a limbo <laughs> stick. It's fucking, it was depressing, man. So with Valerian, Luke Besson already had ample art from the original source material to draw from. But he wanted to incorporate... You think? But he also wanted to incorporate an original design as well. So That's he's, why it failed. He sent an anonymous letter, as the story goes, to several design schools around the world. And he said in, and he said this in an interview, and he asked students to submit designs for a world, an alien, and a spacecraft with few other details. Did he so, pay them for this? No, that's why he used students. That fucker. Interns. Five artists were hired out of the 2,000 that sent in submissions. And Besson worked with them one on one for a year via Skype as not to influence their creativity. Then he brought them all together, and the result was more than 200 alien species, only a f- small fraction of which made it into the film. Yeah, but the those ones were good. That, the yeah. aliens that were introduced at the beginning, oh, that yeah, handshake that, sequence, yes, where this, that was glorious. where the station was getting yeah. bigger and bigger with each with each year. That, that whole was. thing, that that whole intro, it was, was like glorious. a bait and switch. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It got me all excited. It's like, why don't you take this Maserati for a spin? All right, here's your Volkswagen. What? <laughs> you know? yeah. No, 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 no. 
Volkswagen is kind. Volkswagen makes a good automobile every now and then. Here's your Chevy Here, Citation. Here's your oh. day woo. <laughs> oh, your day woo. Oh, and being a car guy, I just cringe at that also. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, yes, sir. Maybe I can So answer these that. are majors, sergeants, lieutenants, the agents themselves. Major and a sergeant. Major Valerian. They're sergeant. awful young. Now, that was never addressed. There is in the backstory. Okay. Well, it was never addressed in the movie. No. Um, it's so a is big there... thing that was left. Now, maybe the source material might be completely different. I'd have to defer totally to Nathaniel. Different. So is there some sort of anti-aging thing yes. that only they get because the regular army doesn't seem to? Apparently. Apparently, in the backstory that I was reading through my deep dive and my mine of, of information, uh, they are genetically enhanced, so they do not age like the rest of their... Uh, Military counterparts. All right, that had echoes of like uh, the honor verse by uh, Weber in it, yeah, which yeah, I, yeah. I thought was interesting. Yeah. Um, um, also, also, the city of a thousand mm-hmm. planets thingies um, has become so massive that it's disrupting the Earth's orbit. That, that actually kind of makes sense. It mm-hmm. becomes a large object in orbit, which begins to generate its own gravity. I think they made comment yeah. that it was about the size of the moon. Yeah. So you've got a moon-sized station yeah. in between the moon and Earth. Gravitational forces. <laughs> and you know, that not, I was like, yeah. oh, there's some actual science works. in this. <laughs> no, no, there wasn't. But what I thought was hilarious. No, no, let's talk more about this, man. You just put it equidistant on the other side and it's fine. Oh, well, it, you know. <laughs> yeah. What I thought was we're going to put it, we're going to push it out. And we're going to put it in a current to the stars. Oh, my God. Wouldn't no. that, if you had put two... Well, I guess I could have put no. If you I put think two it, of the same body, same size bodies on equal yeah, sides of the just, earth, it cuts the, 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 the titan our, in half. Yeah, but our, co- our core will become a ooey gooey and pull. Uh, yeah, I forget but what that it's mess called. With tides. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You'd get two. That would be. That would fuck a lot of shit up on no, the planet. No, I mean. it wouldn't. Just one chart, which goes out to everyone's computer. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, mean. I think the whole. I think the point was it was growing continually, and it was still getting larger. And you saw what it was like four hundred or three hundred years later. Yeah, three hundred like, years. Okay, this thing is probably the size of the Earth. I'm just gonna say, if you have, what's the next number up from trillion? I think it's quadrillion. Yeah, quadrillion. quadrillion. Yeah. So you have something that's easily a hundred quadrillion credits, or Scooby snacks, or dollars, or whatever the fuck they use in the future. You don't just go and we give it into the space. Actually, I thought that was really cool. The idea of like a traveling space station. Oh, no, that is cool. That is. But not the the big one. Not the one that, I mean, think about it. You've literally bankrupted a planet planet. to build this. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. It's built over time. No, no, no. It it represents a monumental amount of time and investment. And we're just going to. Bye. (laughs) Put it into the current. I also think at that point, it wasn't really up to earth now that i, I that, they that had, i could see i could see that as a political tool yeah um they had I, many other I, alien races. I would have been interested the movie i wanted to see was that breaking free of the father planet yeah the movie that i would have been good planet continued where the intro of, stopped we, we are we yeah. are an independent nation and you can't tell us what to do anymore earth mm-hmm. that's the movie i wanted to see so in the comics and actually in the anime they deal with i don't remember if it's actually called alpha i think it is but that big massive collection of everything one big urban hub that is like bigger than a human could even begin to imagine Uh Mm -hmm. it's you know it's a central theme it comes back to it and it's handled so well and so many sci-fi stories and animes and books and shows all kind of deal with that yeah i was expecting it to be kind of like a babylon 5 story when I was when I saw the pitch, oh, mm-hmm. it's a city of a thousand planets. That sounds really cool. The story had almost nothing to do with the city at all. And had to do it, with it, it, it one was... stupid love story between people we didn't give a shit about. Yeah. <laughs> but the cinematography was awesome, I thought. No. No? No. I thought you it was like almost... the camera work? I did not. Uh, they, it was all digital. They, I mean... they, they went completely side on for every military scene, which impersonalizes them just. It, it was heavy handed. Oh. It was all it right. was not subtle at all. It was laying it on with a trowel the whole time. There were a few camera shots that I thought were really cool. I remember thinking them at the time, but I, I also didn't. didn't the, the, but I, but I didn't think they were noteworthy enough to add to my no, notes. No, did you okay. have one? Maybe I missed it. For what? Of cinematography. 
Oh, the, the cinematographer is... Uh, th- I can't pronounce his name properly. Give it your best shot. Theory Argogast. Thierry, I think Thierry. it's Thierry. Thierry Ar- Arbogast. 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 Something you should, along you those lines. learn the pronunciation. Yeah, I probably names. should. Yeah, <laughs> I, especially with French films, yeah. because I'm probably hurting a lot of people's yeah. ears. We've done three of them so far, right? Three French yeah. films? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. Get, I'll get on that. Uh, he's most <laughs> notably worked with Luc Besson in his movie, so I do like his cinematography. Mm-hmm. The score I also really like, though. I thought the music was great. What yeah. did you think? Are you, you're, just, you're just kind of... Yeah. It was all right. The whole I, thing. You're saying, I, I, no, I get it. I, I got so disappointed in this movie that I'm having a hard time seeing good. I, 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 we'll, I will admit to that. Okay, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to your, your unfavorness with this, both of you guys. In, in just hold minutes. back. Uh, the nice. score was actually uh, Alexander Desplat. Desplat. Again, I need to... <laughs> I, you're, you're I, killing me. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> any, any, if if we happen to have any listeners that are French or of French descent, uh, I I am truly apologetic that okay, I'm butchering. I, I'm, I'm going to go back. There was one scene that I thought was incredibly well shot, mm-hmm. and that was the alien food fight where they're all in a line and he's going to eat her brain. Oh yeah, and they fight. Oh. That was great. That was a fantastic. Yeah, scene. The, yeah but the, that the, whole the, sequence was pointless. It was. It was, it was fine. It was, it but it was great because it. people stopped talking, and it was a great <laughs> movie as soon as yeah. people stopped talking. And it had yeah. bubbles in it, the, and bubbles. Her whole voice. I'll Boy, admit, she sounded uninterested. I'll she admit, sounded like there are some songs from Rihanna. As much as yeah. they're overproduced, I do like, but. Just her voice was very out of place. Even just the look. You look at a character in a movie, in an animated character or a CG character or anything, and you, you, you have in your head immediately you have what that voice to that character should sound like. And it did not sound like that. No, no. it did not. It, it, it should have been something completely different. Yeah. It should Again, going back to her. the whole Moulin Rouge thing, like, as mm-hmm. soon as I saw her start dancing... The uh, Moulin Rouge mm-hmm. theme song that was done for the Baz Luhrmann remake mm-hmm. or the Baz Luhrmann movie. movie, great movie, and that song and there's that music video with Christina Aguilera, <laughs> Lil Kim, and Pink. I had Lil Kim's voice just pop into my head. I like, didn't because there was one scene where she was uh, doing this flapper thing and she had an umbrella. <laughs> I was just thinking under my umbrella. I couldn't. I, there was no. It, it it may be because of who I am, yeah. But I had very few points to connect to this movie, where there was something that was outside that yeah. drew me into the movie. There was there was no hook for whatever is wrong with my personality, but there was nowhere that it could it could sink into me to make me care. So any care. anytime yeah. anything bad happened, oh, space hippie's gone. Don't care. Rihanna's dead. Don't, Don't care. care. I mean, the one one of the things that yeah. I really did like was that <laughs> the alien race that was that we were the refugees that were obliterated their planet was obliterated yeah. scavengers they all have like a scavenge of like plus seven yeah. and they're oh. scavenging their you know a whole like they've scavenged over the last what they 20 have years they re- no they have the skill reverse engineer oh yeah plus two thousand which was I, really I, I cool to watch years yeah which was really cool to watch thirty years to do all of that. I, I, I do want to say this. I hated this movie. <laughs> okay. No, that's totally Fuck fair. You hated this movie. <laughs> but, wow. But I would love to play in this world. But I will, I will Without go, those characters. <laughs> I will go one up on that, actually. I would love to see this movie from every other character. <laughs> I, yeah, like, like I, all, I like I, as, John as Goodman's the... character. I want to know more what's going on with him. Um, even Bubbles, sure, I'll take a whole day of Jolly the Pimp. Anyone but those I'll two: watch. boy meets girl, boy gets girl, boy convinces. Who the fuck cares? It I was... would even be. I would even be interested in watching a movie of Laureline coming up through the ranks without Valerian. You know, I did not think it was possible to see a love story worse than Starbuck and Apollo. <laughs> I just saw a love story worse than Starbuck I, and Apollo. I, I woke Brigitte up because uh, I watched it late while she was asleep. Did you wake her up? Like, Baby, I need you to know how bad this <laughs> no, is. No, no, no. <laughs> because at the very end when he presents her with the pearl ring, I yell because I'm listening through headphones. Don't do it! <laughs> I just also <laughs> didn't just like that. Like care. the whole love will save us all bit. Oh, God. It and, was and like I'm the, the fifth one, element, but worse. And I'm the one for you. Yeah. Fifth Element had subtlety to it. It had yeah. heart. 
This was just trite. Okay, just, so yeah. so in one of the scenes, and she's <laughs> she's telling him, "No, I we're never going to get together because you have like this gallery of women." And they even put up like playlist. all these mug shit. Yeah, playlist of women, which is an incredibly with. appropriate name. It's your playlist. It's the list you play with. And yeah. in the span of I think, yeah, maybe two days, he's com- he's 180 degrees out. That's extremely you fast. You see that there him. were hints of the society behind it in that something like they both referred to it as the playlist, which implies much looser sexual mores no, than we fi- have. Well, now. okay, that's fine. I'm which, fine with which that. Which I'm fine with too. And I love the fact that it was called a playlist. And I wanted to see more of that society. But boy meets girl and marries girl. It's just fucking kill me. Should we start ha- on the whiteboard? Like how many movies this trope has that we that we do? No. no. No, then we'll just hate ourselves. Yeah, and then we'll start hating. <laughs> There'll be a movies. constant reminder. Dusty, I, I, I don't mean to hurry you because we've we've talked about this and I'm bad at it, but I need you to get through this so I can start screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 ju- I just have to ask: Do you have anything in here that'll make me love it? Because I wanted to love it. I um, really did. Laura leans and Valerian spacesuits bear a striking resemblance to the protective <laughs> armor of the Mondashi ones. A little bit. We're around the shoulders. Okay, yeah. that's a point for me. Now go. You're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so as much as you guys, the two of you, Matthew and Nathaniel, hate this movie, apparently. Thank you for sticking through it because I kind of sort of enjoyed it. I liked it for what it was. So thank you. I know this every once in a while this is going to happen. So you may now feel free to roam about the cabin and just rip it to shreds. Okay. Th- I, before I do that, I want to say a few things that I did like. I like the jellyfish. Oh, that the was jellyfish. really cool. And I like the jellyfish I also, captain. I also, like the, I also like he the pilot. He was awesome. Oh, my, oh, by the way. My yeah. <laughs> I like the pilot fish. Yeah. The, the pilot, pilot fish, fish and then the butterflies that were yeah. ended up being on like f- fishing lures. Yeah. How they... All of that was interesting. It yeah. turned into way too long of a side story. Yeah. But yeah. that's the stuff that I would but like th- to see for that movie. But those were the only positive parts of it. Yeah. Everything that wasn't those actors attempting to act, I loved. It's a, we're, and again, this is going back to the fact that we were in love with the background, the yeah. stuff that was there. Like, I, I liked, liked the ship. I liked the pigeons. Yeah. Uh, which one? you got to remind me. The I pigeons. like the little... The, the, the little... triumvirate. Oh, of, I fucking hated yeah. Oh, I hated them. that. I thought well, they were great. The reason I hated them is because suddenly they appear. I have no fucking clue who they are. Why are they there in a corridor? They smelled that... it with their noses. But no, I, I had no noses. idea who they were. She knew who they were. She never said who they were. The whole the audience was just supposed to be like, oh, okay, well, we're suddenly interested in them for some reason. You've never mentioned these characters before, and suddenly they're important. I thought that happened with so many characters. They're just yeah. like, hello, I'm here. And you're like, who are you, so, and why should I give a fuck? One tiny... Ma- tiny, 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 physically even tiny character that I really liked. It was a very large plot point. The little puppy was a little iguana that shot out pearls. It was awesome. <laughs> I just don't understand how it replaced the mass. Mass? The mass that it needed. Yeah, it, it shot out more than its body weight. How? It's an alien, dude. Alien. No, 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 no. no. When you like do George sci-fi, Sucalos. when you do sci-fi, you have to have. No, you At don't. least no, you don't. a deflector dish that no, you can you hang don't. all this magic no. shit off of. It's called <laughs> science fiction. No. I'm no. a sci-fi writer. That's okay, not bad. So, so you're okay with... I'm surprised that you would say that before you art- said anything about artificial gravity. None of those ships were based on gravitational... Uh, gravity is the what, one of the weaker forces of the planet. You, you can... Uh, of the planet, of the universe. It's far... It's, it's less than radio waves. Why haven't we mastered it now? Because 2,000 years ago, we were still nailing people to bits of other things. Gra- artificial I mean, gravity we're dumb. is my biggest pet peeve in almost that all That one sci-fi. doesn't bother me. There's a the lot of ways that so around so many that. people can just hand wave it, but there's never an explanation. People just sort of think of spaceships as sea ships, and they apply some of the same logic to them, but it's completely different. Oh, if you also think about it, the entire concept of a manned spaceship is a little silly. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's getting into gravitational forces are, are nothing to be fucked with. And sci-fi always gets it wrong. Yeah, gravity is a weak force. But it's sci-fi. But science Gravity fiction. is one of the few truths of existence. It's like you, you need food and you will fall. <laughs> um, yes. un- I'm, I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong, but yeah. of the glaring holes, that Taxes one didn't bother me as much. Unless um, you go out to a flat earther society, then they're like, 
it's just a theory. No, no, no. It's not those, real. Those I don't, don't think exist. those people are real. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just someone having a good time trolling. Yeah. Um, I also I I loved the intro. The intro the was intro was great. Inspiring. Yes. It starts with David Bowie. Mm-hmm. And it's, yeah, and it reminded me of that Commander Hatfield's video where he was mm-hmm. up in the space mm-hmm. station. Yeah, for singing "Space Oddity," that immediately connected with me. I'd like to read my note on Valerian. Okay, Him. please. Personally, my first impressions. Oh, I yes. like to jot down first impressions. Excellent. Keanu Reeves. He's annoying. Period. And a skis. Period. He acts like a little prepubescent Keanu Reeves. Period. <laughs> 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 now. I liked the concept of the reverse aging, but there's a concept when they're dealing with that, as they do at great length and at huge word count in David Weber's Honorverse, that it, what it does is stretches out puberty so that it's not something you go through in eight years. It's something you go through in 30 years. So God, like I elves. would hate that. It so, suddenly yeah, yeah. explains why elves live Which would also children explain until their early why he's yeah. so... Fucking annoying. annoying. Yeah, I'm with you. Because everyone who wanted to kill him, I was on their side. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, please make him go away. Make him. And then when they finally introduced him as Valerian, I'm like, he's not going anywhere. The movie's after him. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, you know what's even worse? He's a teenager. All of the prior uh, source material is called Valerian and Laureline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Valerian and, and Laureline. Yeah. They are a pair and they are both important characters why is this just called valerian that's yeah that's not cool with me they could have called it valerian and laureline but instead they call it valerian in the city of a thousand planets that's not a short that's, name that's longer of the two characters she was the more interesting one no oh, i agree completely um, right I, I i will say right up until the end of that that first fight scene and i want to talk about that first fight scene which you one? have this magnificent about? trans-dimensional oh, combat that. concept, mm-hmm. and you use it once. Yeah. Once. I would watch Why a whole movie with that Why is there not a box that goes around his ship, which enables him to just get ahead of the other in, ship? He's he, That technology exists. In my mind, I rationalized I that as that being specific to that location. Because I asked the same question. I figured it was something that had been specifically set up with like fields and yeah. generators to take that market and extend it across multiple worlds. That entire scene was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked... I, and the internal logic was sound. Even, even when using like fantasy words masquerading as science. All right. You've you've ordered things. You put your chitty in the box, and this matter assembler will ship it from wherever that is in the universe to right mm-hmm, here. Mm-hmm. They refer to it as a different dimension. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it was a place in the universe. It, it may not have been, but the point is, is that it was all internally consistent, and it was all very well done. The shoppers were better characters. They were. <laughs> they were even better. The, even, even that married couple yeah. with the the stereotype. Of, oh my god! Look at where we're at. Oh yeah. Now I'll tell you someone who I cared about in this movie. The guy who was controlling the guard, he was funny. He was pretty good. He was amusing. I cared about his death. And everyone on that bus died. Did they? Yeah. I didn't really. Mm -hmm. The the critter died. I saw people died. No, the the critter got him. The big critter. I cared cared when it fell to the. Oh, yeah, because it gave a whimper. It It gave a little whimper. Eh, monster. It It was just doing its. It was doing what it was raised to do. It just happened to be raised by a madman. It probably John could have been a sweet puppy. I liked, speaking of uh, character design, I, I loved the character design. Um, I loved the, uh, the the robot battle droids. Mm-hmm. I loved how they looked with the very muscular yeah. neck and shoulders mm-hmm. swept in. With it reminded the me a lot of the up. Geth. Yeah. The Mass Effect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 the big black like androids? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. That the being Katrons, said, I was yeah. expecting more from them. Yeah, so was I was waiting for them to turn real early. Yeah, I, no, I mean I was expecting more in their like combat capabilities. There was that too. I mean, yeah. They went down pretty easy. I think yeah. Cylons lasted longer. Yeah, than those yeah. Things. The fucking dog lasted longer <laughs> than those things. <laughs> the dog took so much concentrated fire, but those things were taken down by pistols. <laughs> um, I wonder how the refugees got the goo guns going, and I like the goo guns. The goo guns were pretty cool. The goo guns were cool. I don't understand that thing he had in his mouth, the spider. It's like he had a very specific solution to a very specific problem, and he just knew that that problem was going to be coming. So he just 
had one of those in his pocket. So that there is, I'm okay with. Hang, hang on, there, there, I want to address that real quick. I'm immobilized. Sorry. So there's, there's well, a, not just a, there's immobilized, a, coated in goo that a spider can cut. He there's, also had a breather in his mouth. There was a throwaway comment early in the movie, if I remember correctly, that his intelligence specifically has been enhanced so much that he can almost anticipate and see everything that's going to be happening in a, in a specific setting. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> he sure didn't demonstrate that intelligence any other time. I, but I think that's, that's where I gave a little more leeway because they made it a point of like, oh, he can pretty much act his way out of anything. <laughs> I, he's got, he's <laughs> rolling natural 20s. <laughs> that dude can't act his way no, out I of one I of those words. Boxes. He's like rolling <laughs> natural 20s. I, I, I already said this earlier, but I, th- I think it's my main point. I won't you be hate labor. The movie? No, I, I won't be labor all of it. I liked this movie until someone tried to act, until people started talking. I liked every part of this movie except for when people started talking. Do you want to know what I really loved about this movie? Huh? Their fucking spaceship. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I love their I liked, spaceship. I liked their interactions with the spaceship. Yeah. The spaceship. Reminded me in a fun way. If you, if any of you have seen the new Tick series, on yeah, Amazon, so yeah. good. It reminded me of Danger Boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danger Boat, with, who was done by Alan Tudyk. The mm-hmm. ship reminded me of that ship. Oh, of, the, the interactions between the, the the crew, the group hug at the end. Ah, oh. we gonna hug it out. Uh, hug, it, hug, oh, it out hug it out. Hug it out. Yeah, I blocked that out. No. <laughs> oh, where they're all like, let's do a cuddle puddle. Yeah, and yeah, let's do a cuddle puddle. But the and cuddle puddle makes the a planet. Stars. I don't. What, what happened what there? That. I, no, I think that was a return to the interdimensional stuff. Because they had that field and crossing through they that field. They did say that it could go through yeah. time. But so I think they had set up some kind of a hand wave device which connected <laughs> the yep. spaceship's insides to yeah, the time and place of the planet. The, I am pulling this out of my head. My no, it I sounds mean, good. No, it sounds know. good. The only cuddle puddle moment I've liked recently it was in Guardians of the Galaxy with Groot. Was this where the second pr- one? I haven't first seen the second one. one. It's the first one where he protects them. Oh, yeah, protects that's right. Them. Yeah. Oh. I know. <laughs> I did love when she just beat the shit out of the commander. Oh, yeah, that there. was great. I mean, that was face shot after face shot. He's down. He's not even conscious, and she's still just pounding away on him. I didn't understand their military ranks. They keep talking about a four-star general, and they had a general. And yeah, the general seemed to be I got them, them confused. And the, they always called him the commander. Yeah. Isn't a general a higher rank than a commander? In our known military, yeah. yes, but it's also 400 years in the future, so things may have changed. Okay, I do love that though. When she just, you know, you stole my cookie, rage on him, <laughs> beat the crap out of him. Yeah. I can appreciate but, it. You stole my cookie, rage. But then he was fine afterwards, so I didn't appreciate that. He didn't mm. even have a bruise. <laughs> uh, yeah. So can can we talk about fun we, stuff? Let's move over <laughs> to games. Let's go ahead and take a break real quick. Okay. And uh, when let's, we come let's take and, a shot. And, yep, <laughs> and and we're going to come back and we're going to let Nathaniel dive down the rabbit hole of what games he brought to the table. Good, cuz I really want to I really think it's a fantastic world. It was just it was not brought out conceived. well by this by this movie. Yeah, Luke Besson, he failed. Yeah. Sorry, Sorry Luke. <laughs> He'll just we'll go we'll cry himself to sleep on his residual millions. So we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be back in a few moments. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If, you, uh, <laughs> if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, they also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, if you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. We all Let's agree. Talk about Farscape more. No, we all agree the movie was good until you got to the actors, right? Yeah. Let, I, think let's... I, I can definitely agree that the movie was good until the actors stepped yeah. in. And the actors were fed the script. But, I mean. But again, you to, can kind of. To a degree, you can yeah. get around that if you're a good enough actor. 
So Flash let, Gordon is a fantastic example. Yeah, Brian exactly. Blessed and some several of the other actors in that just basically fucking took Ming, this, dude. The, yeah, <laughs> who was Max von Sydow? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. They took the crap that they were given and were like, and we're just made it there. This. Yeah, and they made it amazing. gorgeous. All right, so I don't take, think that take a this. good actor and let's just do the top two. Okay, that's fine. Uh, uh, Lorelai and, and fucking Valerian. I can't think of one for Laureline. Do you? You were saying during our break that she was supposed to be a primitive. So the original character was from uh, from the stories and from the comics and the anime. Mm-hmm. They both follow the same, roughly the same story that Laureline was from, uh, I think, 11th century Earth. Now, in the source material, how old is she? Teens. Okay. Late okay, teens. so we need a, a, someone who at least looks young. She, yeah, he accidentally absconds through time with her. She stows away on his ship. Mila and Kunis. Comes back. Yeah, that's that's a good one. Oh yeah, I could I could see that because that would also wash the taste she, out of. I my haven't mouth seen for her Jupiter ascending in like eight years. Does oh, she's she still I, young? She's fine. She's I, fine. I, yeah. I enjoyed yeah. Jupiter ascending. I was fine yeah. with it until the dog ears and the ice roller uh, and the ice skates in space. All right, what about him? I liked it better than. Fucking Valerian. <laughs> no, okay. So Mila Kunis, and I agree, she could do a great job. With yeah. Okay. Valerian? Valerian? Yeah, for Valerian. Joseph Gordon Levitt. I agree. Yeah, completely boy. I agree. I would I put completely him in agree. That. All right. Yeah. All right. So you have br- do it. You have brought games to the table, Nathaniel, for this movie. I I have brought a couple of games. All I've right. Got some, some games to talk about. Yeah. Uh, this movie is at least. Game worthy content. Yes, very this much. This movie so. has everything. It has market chases. It has infiltration. It has dog fights. It has a grand melee and more. It's and a unique setting. A unique a very setting. Unique that setting. Anything goes. Mm-hmm. It's got a rule of cool setting. So you kind of want to have some, at least a, a, a game which can plan for that in advance or give you the whole. Backup rule. I'm going to spend a cool point and yeah. make a shit happen. Cool. I now have an interdimensional box on my hand, and that doesn't want to let that won't let go because I don't remember the code. Yeah, <laughs> so that I think could work. This game, God, I'm I'm sorry. I'm still I'm trying so hard to be shake enthusiastic. It off. Here, about shake it off. Here, 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 here. <laughs> oh no, I I've still got some. I'm, of the OGD I'm looking over here. forward. <laughs> take here, some more. Quick. I'll take some more. All right, I need another shot. <laughs> You're looking forward to what? I'm I'm honestly looking forward to the game because I I loved the setting. I thought the setting was first rate. Whoever you know, like, it, and that's all comics, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, given the similarities that this kind of has with the fifth, the fifth element, you might just assume that we could use feng shui, which we talked about in our first episode. I don't think it's technically. Right for this. Okay, I agree. Honorable There's mention. There's not enough variation. I don't even think I'm an honorable yeah. on that on that part. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't think it has the soul of feng shui. I think feng shui and fifth element were a, a really good match. Yeah. They they both sort of spoke to each other. This one, there's a number of games that I was thinking of. Was uh, it that one? <laughs> Rifts is one of my honorable mentions. Oh, wow. Uh, Nicely done. Now, this is something that Did we talked about. you see how I didn't say it? Yeah, I, I, I noticed how you didn't say it. I was we very talked proud about of you. this in Fifth Element. I think every Rift has cast. a setting called Phase World. Yep. Mm-hmm. This whole city of a thousand planets, Alpha, is essentially Phase World. Phase, phase world. Market. Yeah. Yeah. Phase World. That, and it has doors open to different realities, and mm-hmm. everything is a, like, a whole different point there. Yeah. Yep. It has a central warden race, although in Phase World, it's the, whatever they're called. I forget. Prometheans? I forget the name of the race. But in, you just whatever hand wave it, it's humans. Yeah. I think Phase World would be good. You could also take uh, any of the character classes and the races, any aspect that is, exists in the entire Rift's megaverse. And fit it 100% immediately into a Valyrian based game. That being said, it's still riffs. Moving on. Another one that I think would really work, and I know we mentioned kind of staying away from generic games, I think Savage Worlds with the sci fi companion, and there's a handful of settings that match it. There's one called The Last Parsec, which was an official setting. Uh, there's another old official setting called Slipstream which is kind of that whole 1950s, 1960s futuristic vision. That would be very cool just to look at. I Save think that it, one for Sky Captain. 
I was, oh yeah, it's like you're reading my mind. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I'm gonna save that one because if we talk about Sky Captain, which we, we will, will, that I think is going to be a, a high contender. However, in order for me to enjoy this conversation, I need to take some inspiration from the source material, which I liked more. And the source material is written in the 60s. Yeah. And it definitely has that vision of the future aesthetic to it. It's Jodorowsky. Oh, no, I don't remember who did it, but I know uh, you said their names earlier, and I'm not even going to pretend to pull them out of my asses, my multiple asses. But there, <laughs> around the same time, there was also uh, a comic book called The Inkel by uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky. But they all share similar themes, and all of those themes have that high future mm -hmm. <laughs> counterculture aesthetic of what the future of the 1960s is going to be. Yeah. And I, I love that whole era. Yes. So do I, Art Deco mm -hmm. and like w Metropolis kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that aesthetic is core to the slipstream setting for Savage Worlds. And I think it would fit the source material a little better than it would the movie itself. Yeah. we. It's okay. I don't think you have to apologize for that. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and, and take that as, as written. There's... Yeah hundreds of science fiction games. Yeah. Popular ones such as Traveler. I was thinking that as well. Yeah. Uh, there is a another popular one that might work, Eclipse Phase, which is a little oh, more yeah. transhumanist, where the characters kind of slip between different forms as needed for missions. It could kind of work. At least it has some of the themes in this super, 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 super high future anything's possible. Setting. Yeah. So I have brought two specifically. What you got? Now, the first one is one that I had initially thought I was going to go with as the number one game. Have all of you played the old West End Star Wars game? Yes. Yes. I love it. So West End made the Star Wars game, and they went Still through several editions. Mm -hmm. And the final edition of that game was called Revised and Expanded. Mm -hmm. And it was a really cool book. That's the one with the Falcon on the front. Yes. Yes. It's the darker book, Millennium mm -hmm. Falcon on the front. And every chapter of the game is not so much text that you read, it's text that is presented to you from a character in the setting. Yes. Each chapter has its own tone, as if you are being taught the game by someone in that world. Right. It's a fantastically educational game that teaches you from beginning to end how to play. It's not just a tome, a reference, like many gaming books are, like Rifts over here. Yeah. Just expects you to pick it up read it from cover to cover, know how to play. This one If only that worked. <laughs> well, they lost the license for that mm. way back in the day. And around that time, they decided, oh, well, this, this is my assumption here. I don't know the full story about how this happened, but they gained another license, and that license was called The Meta Barons. Comic book, Alejandro Jodorowsky, who also did The Inkle. The mm -hmm. Meta Barons was introduced in The Inkle. Valerian and Laura Lean are heavily inspired by the Inkle. Okay. Luke Besson was sued by the creators yes, of the Inkle. Yes, he <laughs> was. There's a heavy amount of connection here. The Meta Barons is, well, now this is an older book. You can tell it's seen a lot of use. And it's also French, so the uh, spine is reversed. Oh, that is weird. But so this book is Star Wars Revised and Expanded. Somebody at Weston Games acquired the license, took the Star Wars Revised and Expanded book, cut out all of the art and references to Star Wars, replaced them with art and references to Meta Barons, and that's this book. Oh, that's it kind is, of awesome. It is page for page, section for section, almost identical to Star Wars Revised and Expanded. So if you have played the old D6 system, that's it. Cool. It, it is a perfectly playable game. How is the uh, the setting? The setting is very much like Valerian. Like you have this, it's a little more totalitarian. There's a dominating human empire, and all of the alien races are either in. You mean like the humans or... that crash willy nilly throughout their environments, <laughs> creating big holes and just slaughter planets without a with nary a thought. <laughs> this is America, buddy. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's about that. Now, the Meta Barons, <laughs> I'm not going to dig too much. There's a comic series called the Meta Barons, mm. and this is the little game based on that comic series. And it is essentially Valerian meets Dune. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, one of the, the, the magicians are of order of powerful female witches with, with like 
cybernetic implant rods drilled into their skulls. Okay. They're called the Shabdaud. They that essentially are the Bene Gesserit. Right. Yeah. yeah. It sounds very Frank Herbert Dunish. It is very Frank Herbert Dunish. And Yudorovsky. Dune yeah. was yeah. the original so, director for, yeah. for Dune. Which so there's so the much of this. The circle becomes complete. It's, yes. a, it's, it's a complete circle. circle. It's just the master. So if you want something that is easily accessible, that if you are most everybody I know that we're going to listen, is going to listen to us, it's probably at some point encounter the D6 system. It's yeah. extremely popular. Yeah. Meta- oh, I love it. And it's playable. Yeah. It's a very playable, very easy system. What I like about it is you don't actually make a character. You take a template mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that kind of fits a character that would exist in the setting. And you your base it, stats are already there. You, you tweak it a little bit, yeah. and you call it good, and you go. So Meta Barons is my runner-up. The winner. What's, what you got? Bum, 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 bum. I did not know this game existed until a few weeks ago. Oh, that's and a beautiful I'm a, cover. Yeah, it is. It's, it's very colorful. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. It looks like old Mobius. So this game is called Myriad Song. Role-play adventure on 10,000 worlds. Oh, there you go. That's this almost suited just for this movie. Heavily inspired by sci-fi classics such as Valerian and Laureline, The Incal, Rock and Rule, Gandahar, Star Chaser. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And those many, many, many issues of Heavy Metal Magazine. Was this a are, Kickstarter are we... or was this is this out is this major publication? It was kickstarted in twenty thirteen by okay. Sanguine Games, who some of our listeners, I seriously doubt either of you have heard of them. They may better know as the creators of a number of furry games. Oh such as Jade Claw, Iron Claw, Albedo, and one of my personal favorites. The official Usagi Yojimbo role-playing game. Oh, no shit. Now that I know. So why this one? Well, mainly it's the fact that there are a bajillion freaking races and, and they're all weird. There are the six-armed spider people. There are the dinosaur people. There are the people that I would rock a suit. dinosaur person. There are the dog people. There or are the people which are actually two people, one of which is a dumb husk and one of which is an alien plant implanted in it, which becomes uh, two separate people. In fact, when you make this character, you have two separate templates and they have different traits and they it's really fucking cool. You have the, the shapeshifter people. Sounds cool, but it sounds like it'd be a lot to play the spider, out. Yeah, so there's spider people, the dog people, the robot suit people. It's got all of the races and there's a source book for it, which adds like a dozen or two more. Interesting. Um, have you, what, what's the system itself like? So the system is, well, first off, the book itself is deceptively thick. It is full of text, just text, 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 I text, noticed text. that. And the text is kind of compact, so it looks like there's a lot of rules. The game itself is actually pretty simple. Uh, you can Once you start looking at the underlying section of it, it's most you realize that most of the text in this book is one-off rules or adjudications right. or extensions to things which might come up during play. My theory is that 90 to 95% of actual play is super fast because the core system is a very simple, basic one, two, three, or four die pool system. Roll okay. a number of dice. Most of the times you want to get a three or higher on each of those dice. It uses D4s, D6s, D8s, D10s, and D12s. It is currently on Drive Through RPG as a PDF for $25. And you can order the physical book. Yep, as well. And the physical is $44.97 yeah. USD. The PDF, in my opinion, it's a little expensive. 25 bucks for yeah. the file. Yeah, you guys uh, might I would rather it. have the physical book, yeah. actually. I got it off Amazon for the same price as the PDF. Okay. This was kickstarted in 2013, and I feel like it delivered. They have a, a number of supplements and a three issue graphic novel based oh, on uh-huh. it. Yeah. Excellent. Um, have you played it? I have not. Hmm. I just heard about it two weeks ago, and I read it over the last week. Right. This is something that I would love to play, though. I want to run this <laughs> as a multi-session game. Right. There's so much richness to how you build your character. Some things that I like about it is that, first off, your race, your class, those are actually stats. Right. Your, your race is a stat, like how human you are or whatever, that you can add to different traits. Okay. Like humans, I think one of the things was uh, quite, humans are good at... Finding information. They're good at interfacing. So the questioning is one of their skills. Yeah. That you just add your human die whenever you investigating something. So you have a human die. I have probably rolled very well. Yeah. <laughs> the rest of my life. There's no way I can be where I am now if I 
haven't been rolling sixes. I, I, I really dig the system. It's got an interesting okay. combat and initiative Myriad system. Myriad song. Yeah. Yeah. I, the artwork is gorgeous on it. The artwork is fantastic. I really like that that artwork. It, it So we played Savage Worlds in our special Lost episode. Yeah. The Lost Lost. If you both remember, Savage Worlds had a mechanic called Shaken. Yeah. Where it was kind of a stage between being not damaged and being damaged. Yeah. It was a buffer of sorts that slightly limited what you could do, but also, in a way, protected you. Like, as long as you weren't shaken, you were less likely to get hurt. Yeah. This game plays heavily on a concept similar to that, where you have different status effects that you cycle through over time. Part of combat is actually moving and shifting those status effects around, like rallied or frightened or whatnot. You don't have wounds. You don't have damage points. Instead, you have conditions. Right. Like hurt or terrified. Eventually, those conditions will stack up until the point that you get a certain number of them, and then you are dying, right? which is a condition, and then dead, which is a condition. Yeah, I mean, you can just shoot the blue goo in, apparently. Yeah. Right. So the whole thing is this matter of moving conditions around, at least in the combat system. I think it looked pretty cool. I'd love to try it out sometime. Yeah. No, that looks good. The setting, it does have a built-in setting. The setting is set 100 years after the fall of some kind of a multi-galactic conclave run by these world-devouring, soulless, inner-dimensional conquerors. Those are the best kind. These overlords ruled for millennia, and then 100 years ago, vanish. They left no trace other than all of the many technologies that they had built up that kept the trains running on time and all of these worlds which they had cultivated their enslaved races. A hundred years have passed, all of that technology is falling apart because no one knows anything about it because they did it all their own. So now you have all of these factions rising out of the collapse of this empire. Is it generated by spheres of control or, or is it just trying to grab a center of power? Is one like power generation and one like transport? And... Yes. Okay. And some of they're they're more like there were these various rebellious factions against the previous overlords, and when the overlords vanished, those rebellious factions were like, okay, well we've already kind of built these internal networks. Yeah. We're going to consolidate our power, take these planets, and this is our nation, and we're going to prepare in case they come back. Right. So you have the remnant faction, which is the remnants, they call them, mm -hmm. which are the remnants of the former government, the, the puppets okay. of the overlords that are still trying to be like, nope, everything's fine. Yeah. Just We're all fine stay here. in line, people. We're, We're all fine, fine here. How are you? Fine. Uh, you've, got one, you've got several totalitarian regimes, like one that's like, look, we'll, we'll take care of your every need as long as you comply with everything that we say. There's a merchant league, there's the hippie league, there's all different kind of things. It is assumed that your characters are free agents. Right. Kind of operate between the lines. Hmm. Now, that's the setting of this. If we're ever going to use this game for a Valyrian game, we'd just ignore the setting. Because Valyrian, at least the movie and well, the you comics... Just, you just put them yeah. in like a central city environment like yeah. where they meet to negotiate and whatnot. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So, you had an idea. Oh, yeah. So there's this new thing we're trying out where uh, every every episode, we're going to give you a campaign idea, something that you can take at the end of this episode and plug your gaming group into so you don't have to try and figure it out yourself. So in the movie, I guess the U.S. was up there first. Yeah, it was the it was, it was the, the ISS. Well, it was right? the ISS. Yeah. 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 But so, sorry, we, the first we, scene was 1970. Was yeah. That what it showed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It was just the one little pod. So yeah. there's there's. Our space lab looking thing, which becomes the ISS, space and lab. then, you know, more nations join. Well, you, you figure by the time, what was it, like two, 250 years Roughly, before yeah. aliens started arriving? Roughly. And every nation on the Earth, whether they had like a spacefaring capacity or not, it was assumed they were up there. Just, yeah, they were just you, a you, part of it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you saw the, the East Indians, you saw... Yeah. Um, the Asians, you saw the Russians. Yeah, even if they were South just Americans. flying up with another shuttle or yeah. another space pod. They were all greeted and they were all part of that. So at the very beginning of the City of a Thousand Planets is this, and I like to think myself that it's in the center and it was just added to, is this sphere of ancient Earth tech. Oh, it is. 
Yeah. And, yeah, and that's that was at the end. Yeah. They actually used that mm-hmm. in the movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah the like, very that's end. how he communicated with the general. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So now and then the everything else stole it. <laughs> no, they left they left the pod. Oh. Yeah, okay. no, they they were in yeah. the pod. So everything else is tacked on, welded, mm-hmm. uh struts are added on to that. Now, it's assumed that in the future we've all made a consensus and we're all happy, but what what if what if we didn't? What if one of those nations' original plan was to destroy this abomination to nationhood? Oh my God, have you read the the Expanse series of books no. or seen the show in Sci-Fi? You're getting close to home. That's Am I? Good. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I just got Amazon Prime. I haven't seen the I haven't seen the Expanse yet. I don't think the show has caught up to that point in the book, but there's there's kind of a oh is that blow a thing? it deviates thing. it deviates yeah. quite a lot. Ah. Yeah. Well, okay, so here's my thought. The original Earth pods, the center of the station, is failing and everything tied to it. Now, as this is the center, everything runs through it. It's incredibly important. It is a literal case of the center cannot hold. Now, outside of that, you have all these alien pods, all these alien environments stacked on one another to an incredible depth, which can apparently change the Earth's orbit. (laughs) What our heroes have to do is go from their central control area where they're released and make their way down through the labyrinth of all these alien worlds to find out what the problem or the explosive is. Oh my fucking God. You are hitting on a game that I just saw today. Yeah. Oh God. But wait, Uh, I'm not done. That I just saw today, which is that, but a dungeon crawl. Oh, nice. Very specifically. Oh my God. I'm going to feel bad. Sorry, dude. I don't remember. Well, let me keep going, and 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 you'll and you'll and you'll figure it out. So it's either it's either a case of sabotage, or if you don't want to play a villain nation, you can make it so that the integral part, the heart of the station itself, like a main switch, where everything, all the communications run through, is missing. It's too old. The technology is lost. It cannot be fabricated, no matter how much by. It would be like. You and I trying to fabricate an eight track recorder. Okay, I see where you're going with it. It's just it's just something that's lost. I gotta say, that was horrible, but I see where you're going with it. Wasn't that a plot line in an episode of Cowboy Bebop? No, they were looking for a VCR. Yeah, same thing, right? Yeah, but no, an eight track player is not the same. No, but I mean no, no, not the same technology, the same the same plot. The same we gotta find ancient technology. Yeah, it it must it absolutely must be recovered. Uh, it's being held by a radical alien element that sees the homogenous nature of the city as an abomination. Now, oh, after the yeah. original snatch and grab where you get this back, Thank you, you are going to have to deal with such a faction, which can stretch this out into an actual campaign. Because you have people within your city who you may or may not know actively working against the city on a religious zealot basis. So what you are ultimately describing is Babylon 5 and how they constantly have people trying to, who are like opposed to the politics of the station Mm -hmm. and constantly trying to undermine it. And I think that's fantastic because, you know, it's a common theme, especially with space station based kind of stories where hodgepodge of Mm -hmm. all the races. Yeah, this is essentially a planet sized Babylon 5. All right. That's that's fantastic. But that's that's yeah. my idea for a campaign. Th- I like yes. it. I like, I like that it a lot. lot. Yeah. I really think like the crawl through all the different environments and the problem solving therein would bring a gaming group very close together because you will need everyone's skill set in order to navigate your way to the center. I, I love it. Everyone would have their moment to shine, which would make it a very, very good mm-hmm. Uh, way to get a, a disparate group uh, and maybe a new gaming group. That would be a good to idea. To start working together and start problem solving together. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I would totally play that. Yeah. I would run that. Also, I like digging down into ancient Metropolis myself. Uh, it's yeah. a trope I love. That, the whole concept behind like the whole big city in space mm-hmm. and everything, again, taking it back to Rifts, Phase World, which, by the way, just last week officially got a PDF release. Ooh. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm subscribed to their mailing <laughs> nice. list for some reason. But the whole digging down, I found the game that I was just thinking of. Uh, it's called Gathox, The Vertical Slum. It is a up, It is a multi-level space dungeon crawl in an infinitely huge crime city in space, which I think... 
I could find something. Oh, I, I, could, I, could, I was I could reading on that. I was thinking, oh, yeah. Fifth What's Element. it called? Gathox. G-A-T-H-O-X. I just saw this shared for the first time uh, this morning. Gathox. Yep. It's on drive through and mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's <laughs> look at the Gathox art. vertical <laughs> slum. Yeah. 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 It's even got that 1970s style hyper color. Yeah. It's yeah. very bright. Yeah. Yep. Welcome to Gathox Vertical Slum, a far out gonzo science fiction campaign setting for Swords and Wizardry White Box Edition and other classic tabletop role playing games. So, Swords and Wizardry is one of those OSR games that I've mentioned before, which is basically kind of a clone or somebody's house, somebody's modern house rules to old school DD. I like this. Aliens, mutants, spell slingers, and hardened criminals struggle for dominance in a lawless city built upon the back of a wandering, World hopping godling. There you go. So like Discworld. Yeah. Kind of like that. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I, I want I want to see a mechanic for the transdimensional hopping that they do in the movie. Why would you need a mechanic for that? Tell me tell me, what do you want that mechanic to do that simply waving your hand and saying what happens? Well, it would be better than that because Well, it obviously takes skill. Yeah. It seems rare. Agents are trained in how to use it. Like, they, he was familiar with it, and she knew how to repair it. I think the closest thing I can think of off the top of my head is in Shadowrun with mages who have astral projection and yeah. astral vision. I suppose you could file yeah. the serial numbers off something like that. <laughs> yeah. Which basically lets them look into a parallel reality yeah. Yeah. that nobody else can see. Just change that to interaction. Yeah. But you have to double you, you have to double your setting. And you have to double the the risk and your encounters. I could do this right now with Dungeons and Fucking Dragons simply yeah. by saying, "Okay, you put your hand in a box, and now you're interacting with a parallel dimension. What do you do?" And you're like, "Okay, well, I'm going to do this. All right, so now you can see it." You see, I just have yeah. trouble just leaving it at a box. So, would you say you'd like to you want underpants think no. outside no. the well, box? Well, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I, I would like underpants. That whole joke just underpants. got lost. It God wasn't that it. good. I'm sorry, Dustin. Uh, um, ships, cargo, sex. I mean, this could be applied to everything. So, face world, rifts. Yeah. Multi dimensional. Mm, yeah. You don't really need a mechanic. You can actually multi- take the setting dimensions. of like, rifts and plug it into your winning game. Just use that mechanic instead. Yeah, that's more to me personally. Yeah, that's more of a story element. The mechanic is how hard does it hurt when I punch you? Yeah, twice. but I, if I punched you through another dimension, okay, cool. Well, maybe it'll hurt a little bit more, or hurt a little bit less, but we don't have to roll for crossing the dimension unless you want to do something like Rifts does have like what happens when you go through a dimension because it's mm-hmm. unstable. Yeah, this didn't seem very unstable. They seem to no. have a system. Yeah. I just, I really wanted to see more of that. I'm sorry to get back into the movie. It was That's a really okay. cool scene. Because I love the contrast. I would apply that to everything. Yeah. The contrast between them walking around in a just barren, empty space. Yeah. It, it kind of looked like an empty uh, uh, Burning Man is yeah. what it looked like. Well, yeah. And, 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 like and then when, they were, and then when they were in the dimension, yeah. they were at Burning Man. Bunch of delusional, fucked up people walking around. <laughs> sounds like Burning Man to me. Um, yeah, it does sound like Burning Man. <laughs> that, yeah. Maybe that's what the movie should have just been called, Valerian and Burning Man. No. <laughs> There's a number no. of time-traveling <laughs> games. You know, now that you mention it, if you want to like go that straight time-traveling, dimension-traveling way, mm-hmm. Everway. Are I was going to say Doctor Who, the role-playing game. Yeah. Doctor Who can? Okay, sorry. Fuck Easy, you. buddy. <laughs> Easy, buddy. Might, you no, might just like slide I've got, off a whole bunch of our listener base with that I, one. I got a buddy who makes fun of me for th- that thing, so I got to bring it up every time no, now. I, I love Doctor Who. Everway. Everway was a game made by Wizards of the Coast before they did D&D. Mm-hmm. Everway was uh, Jonathan Tweet, who was, the, I think, the head guy on Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition. Yeah. But Everway is a game about, oh, my God, Everway could fucking work for this. I didn't even think about it. Everway is a game where you play basically interdimensional agents of various realities who cross and work as a group of people called sphere walkers. And you travel from dimension, oh, that dimension right. to dimension, timeline and timeline, and going on missions and, and righting wrongs. Everway is so freaking simple. You Do have you want to f- change your final answer? No, and I'll tell you why. All right. And this is that very right to me. This is very important. 
So Everway, I'll get to it in a second. Everway is a fantastic game. Super simple. Four stats, which are just basic numbers from like mm-hmm. one to ten. The mechanic, there's essentially three mechanics of resolution. The first mechanic is you ask the GM, does this thing happen? Uh, well, so what happens when I do this? And the GM just tells you. Mm-hmm. I like that. The, the second mechanic is you compare numbers. Okay, well, I have a strength of five, and he has a strength of six, so he wins automatically. Right. Boom. Okay. The third mechanic, and this is the what makes the game awesome, is it comes with its own custom tarot-like deck of cards called the fortune deck. Each card has names like the mother or overlooking the diamond or stepping on the dragon's tail. And each card has a meaning. If the GM doesn't have an idea of what's going to happen when you do something, they can just flip a card from the deck. And depending upon how it's oriented, mm-hmm. it will mean a different thing. And there's a book to interpret the deck. It's wonderfully interpretive and mm. creates for a fantastic story. Awesome. The problem with doing something like Everway on a video is Everway is a 100% visual game. Uh, you create a character by drawing art. Remember art cards? You guys remember art cards? Like Frank mm-hmm. Frazetta, Boris yeah. Filet, all this yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. You draw art cards, lay them out in a spread, and build your character based on themes from those cards. It is Everway is the visual role-playing game. And I don't think we'd be able to no. do it on a camera. But I think if you're listening at home and you want to play, you want to break up that old Everway set, you should probably do this for Valerian. It'd be a good story. Cool. So we're going to say Valerian, Myriad Stone? Myriad Song. Myriad Song. Myriad Song, Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> I'm still a long, long-time fan of the Meta Barons. And I think the Meta Barons could work. But I think Myriad Song is more interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. All right. We've, we got we've, it. We've opened our second series without a heavy push for Palladium. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I have no happen. familiarity yeah. with that name. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, familiarity is good. All right. Cool. Well, Myriad Stone, Valerian. Myriad Song. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> this bottle was right a lot, in front of you. <laughs> this, this bottle had a lot more booze in it. When yeah. He he, he's he's kind of gone through his drink of choice. You know, I have to say this movie made me drink. In order, in order to, I'm sure it made the director drink. Actually, <laughs> this movie I feel made me bad drink. for him. He, he's yeah. done so much. I loved. I if, if, only... if if Valerian was anything like Fifth Element in the pre-production stages, there was probably it like was a, no. I mean, there was probably a, in the sense of of the original script, there was probably like an 800 page tome of like, hey, this is how we're going to tell the entire story, and I have to cut everything out. I think there's more pages than that. It's called the I goddamn was, comic book. I was being, <laughs> I was being nice. They should have just. Followed the goddamn comic book. I'm done being or nice with the this animated shit. series, which takes the same premise but changes it up a little bit, mm-hmm. to makes it makes it its own thing while remaining faithful. Okay, but no, they're just like we're just gonna take two names and. You know what? <sighs> I'm so like sad. a cat with a dead bird. I'm just hiding this one under the doormat. I was Matthew, and this is Dusty. This is Nathaniel, and what are we doing next week? Next week, we are actually doing The Three Musketeers, the uh, 1973 version. Oh, no, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward that's to Athos, a- Porthos, and Aramis. I'm looking forward to rewatching that. Yeah. I haven't watched that since I was a kid, but I think I watched it about 50 times then. Yeah. And we are going to have a special guest. Yeah. One Ooh. of your friends. Yep. Well, that's I mean, I know our first too. time. Yeah. This will be our trial run with a guest. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking like forward to it. Exciting. Yeah. Fuck, I love that movie. It's good. <laughs> and uh, I have some great games. Well, no, I have a great game for it. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening to another episode of our show. We're a new name in the enormous sea of podcasts and appreciate any feedback that you can send our way. If you like what you've heard, or even if you didn't, please leave us a review and let us know. Got a movie or a game that you want to hear us talk about? Drop us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com or hit us up on any of the usual social networks. We'd love to hear from you. The opening theme music is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, part of the public domain and found on publicdomain4u.com. Opening narration is provided by Isaac Scher. Have Movies Will Game is distributed under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you again next week.